In this tip, I'm going to show you how to create a dynamic quadrant chart using a set action. I've recorded a tip previously that showed you how to do the same thing with a parameter action, but today we're going to do it with a set action. What we're trying to achieve is something like this. We have a scatter plot showing quantity versus sales by month, and when I click on a mark, I want my, my scatter plot, the quadrant of each scatter plot, to dynamically change its color. So for example, if I click on Georgia, then we can see that all that we now have four quadrant colors. If I click on Massachusetts, my quadrant moves, etc. So let's see how we do that with a set action. So what I have here is a scatter plot of sales versus quantity with each dot representing a state. What I want to be able to do is click on a mark and have my reference lines move to that particular mark. Right now my reference lines are set up to just simply be the average. To do that, I'm going to start by creating a set based on the state field. So I'm going to right click on state, go up to create, and then set. I'll call it my state set, and it doesn't really which one you pick, you actually don't have to pick any states, but I'm going to pick Colorado. From there, I need to start building out my reference lines. So I'm going to create a calculated field, and I'm going to call this my sales reference line. I'm going to wrap the whole thing in a level of detail expression so that I get a single value back. So I'm going to say the sum of the int of state set times sales. Round out the parentheses and then put a right mustachio in there. So what this is doing, these calculations work inside out. So the first thing it's doing is it's evaluating if the state is in the set. If it is, it returns a 1. So I'm converting the true false into the value of 1. So for that state, in our example Colorado, it will multiply it by sales. If it's a different state, the int of the state set would be zero, so the sales for that would be zero. And then I want to just aggregate it overall with the level of detail expression. I'm going to duplicate that calculation, edit the copy, and I'm going to call this one my quantity reference line. And all I'm going to change is I'm going to change sales to quantity. Hit OK. And now let's put both of those onto the detail shelf. They need to be on the detail shelf so that we can use them for the reference lines. So let's first edit our reference line for quantity, and we're going to change the value to our quantity reference line. Hit OK. Let's edit the reference line for the sales axis and choose sales reference line, and hit OK. Now what we need to do is we need to set up our set action. So let's go up to Worksheet, and then Actions. I'm going to add a change set values action. Let's call it update state set. I want to make sure it's only done on a single select. When it is run, I want it to assign the value to the set. The set I want to update is my state set. And when I clear it, I want it to keep the set values. So now when I click a different mark, I can see my reference lines move. OK, that works great. Now what I need to be able to do is I don't like how this highlights. So I'm going to, I created a calculated field called dummy and it just has any kind of text inside of it. And let's put that onto the detail shelf. From here, I'm going to go up to Worksheet, Actions. I'm going to add a filter action. Let's call it Remove Dummy, Highlight, or maybe just Remove Highlight, if I could type properly. It's going to go from Sheet 1. The target sheet is Sheet 1. We want to do it on Select single select only, and down here in the target filters, we want to add a filter that goes from dummy to something else that's not in the view. Let's say customer name. Hit OK. Hit OK again, and one more time. And now when I click on a mark, you can see everything moves, but it's no longer highlighted. OK, now that we have that, let me just pick one here that's going to give us four quadrants. I want to go ahead and set up my quadrants. Now, in the parameter actions video, I set it up with a single calculation. This time I'm going to use two calculations so that you can see how this works. To start, I'm going to go ahead and put my state set on color to highlight the state that I selected. Now we want to create a calculated field. Let's call it uh, sales greater than sales reference line. And here I'm going to say the sum of sales is greater than the sum of my sales reference line. Again, that's going to return a true-false. Let's put that onto the detail shelf, 
and then let's click on the little mark indicator and add it to color. And now you can see I, on my color shelf over here on the right hand side, I have in false, which is my selected mark. I have out false, which is the uh, below the sales reference line, and I have out true, which is above the reference line. All right, let's create another calculated field and let's call this quantity greater than quantity reference line. And here we want to say the sum of quantity is greater than the sum of the quantity reference line. Hit OK. Let's put that on the detail shelf and then also add that one to the color shelf. And now we have three sets. So let's first look at the in false false. So that's the mark that we chose. So let's go ahead and maybe make that one, uh, let's maybe make that one uh, maybe a black color, something like that. The out false false, so let's see what that looks like. So that means it's not in the set and it's less, see so this is kind of our bottom left. So let's make that one maybe, uh, let's maybe make that one a dark red. The out false true means it's not, it's not the mark we clicked. The false part means the sales is less than, so that means it's below the sales reference line. And then the true means it's above the, um, uh, the quantity reference line. So this would kind of be the bottom left. So let's maybe make that one an orange. The out true true would be the upper left. And the out true, uh, sorry, the out true false would be the upper left and the out true true would be the upper right. Okay, and now we can see we have our colors. We click on a different mark and everything moves nice and neat. All right, so that's all that I have for today. Again, there's another video for how to do this with a parameter action, but I want to show you how to do it with a set action as well. Have a great day.